everybody today's video is going to be about my ASI Air camera lens setup and what the benefit of this arrangement is is it will allow you to image the sky in a huge field of view six and a half degrees just about by six and a half degrees with the ASI 533 camera so what that means is you can get the entire Cygnus loop within the field of view here with a setup which I will explain in a minute you can get the entire Andromeda galaxy, which is several moon diameters long, wide. The, the whole galaxy takes up like four, three or four moon diameters, if not even more. And it's very difficult to get an image of the entire Andromeda galaxy and even a 72 millimeter refractor with the uh, ZWO 533 uh, MC Pro, uh, as I said, which is what I have. So. What I was going to do is go over my setup and my configuration for this lens camera setup. It's a very special option that ZWO offers. And basically, you have a mounting ring right here, which the camera fits in. And this is a special mounting ring specifically. Uh, it's a small enough mounting ring to uh, fit the uh, ASI 533 camera. It, it, was recently released uh, not really all that long ago and it's specific for the ASI 533 as I said I will have links to all of these items in the description of the video down below and basically the camera sits into the ring and just supports the lens and whatever adapter you have so the adapter I have here is an ASI Nikon adapter so it will take a Nikon F mount lens and the other side is a 42 millimeter thread which will thread on to the 11 millimeter adapter of pretty much all ZWO cameras come with this uh, adapter ring and it will give you the right back focus. So then the lens is kind of a thing you want a manual focus lens and a manual f-stop adjustable lens so you don't want one that will uh, be adjusted automatically with a uh, camera like the new lenses so this is a Rokinon 135 millimeter f2 lens it costs four hundred dollars and yeah it's four hundred dollars but how much does a 72 millimeter which is what the objective is how much is a 72 millimeter F2 telescope cost. Well, I don't really think they make those, but here is a lens, camera lens, which will do the same thing. So the Rokinon lens comes in many different mounting options. You can get uh, Nikon, you can get Canon. I think there's one for Sony. And so you can get many different options for the uh, adapter for the mount uh, at the back end of the lens here is what I'm trying to say. So ZWO has a Nikon adapter to us except Nikon lenses. They also have the Canon lens as I said and then the Sony but I've selected a Nikon lens and uh, I've gotten this adapter has um, Nikon to 42 millimeter as I said and it is a filter drawer so uh, you want to be able to put filters in your camera for deep sky imaging uh, at night. So whether it's a um, UV IR cut filter or like an Optolong L Pro or L Extreme, uh, this will give you the option to add the filter into your optical system. And there you go, it's all set up. So. Uh, once you get the proper lens, you're like most of the way there, but a lot of struggle for me personally was I was trying to use some very old Minolta lenses that I had from, uh, from my family back in the 1970s. I was trying to make those work and it just didn't work because the adapters I was using just, uh, well, it didn't work. So uh, if you want this to work with no problem, you get the Rokinon 132 millimeter lens uh, with either a Nikon or Canon adapter uh, with the filter drawer, preferably that screws into the camera and you are all set. So I've got this uh, mounted on my Celestron AVX and to 
make that happen, I have a an adapter here that is like a universal adapter that has several mounting hose, uh, holes. It's a Vixen adapter. Uh, as I said, I'll leave a link to this particular adapter down in the uh, details of the video. And that mounts to an Orion Vixen to Lost Mandy adapter. So uh, the Lost Mandy adapter did not exactly fit in the Lost Mandy mount uh, of the Celestron AVX here. It's a, I guess there's different kinds of Lost Mandy mounts, I, I would assume. So what I had to do is buy another adapter, a Celestron Universal Lost Mandy adapter here, and it's got a gazillion uh, screw holes in it, and I was able to mount the top part, the Vixen part of the Orion to Lost Mandy adapter. I had to take the Lost Mandy part and remove that, and I just used the Vixen dovetail uh, adapter connector and mounted that to the Celestron universal mount and that connects to the AVX just fine and I, I use this uh, adapter setup for my Astrotech 72 millimeter ED refractor when I do like medium wide field imaging and I'm using the same arrangement for my ultra uh, super wide field imaging of six and a half degrees. So from there, we got the AVX mount. You can see I've made special adjustments to the counterweight here, which has to go a lot closer. Uh, so on top of the ring adapter here, there is dovetail mounting screws for like the guide scope. And you can get like a uh, two, two wide adapter or a three wide adapter I've got a, a one to three breakout here is I guess what it is for this dovetail mount. And I've got my guide scope mounted along with the ASI uh, Plus. Uh, yeah, so that's how I've got the guide scope mounted to this arrangement. It all works very nice. Uh, everything connects to the ASI Air as if it were connected to my Astrotech telescope or even my edge telescope. So. Uh, it's basically using the same breakout dovetail here that I'm using with the rest of my system. So it's all modular and it just depends on what kind of configuration that I want. Here is the power um, power connector coming out of the AVX pre-standard and the power connector here coming out of the ASI Air. And I need two inputs into my Celestron power tank and uh, that's how I've got this powered right now. I haven't had a problem running out of power and jet going overhead. There you go. That's uh, what happens when you're doing live videos. All right, that was awesome. I, I really needed that. Uh, let me see the... Uh, the AVX, uh, you have got a USB connector here on the bottom of the AVX controller that connects right to the USB 2 connector on the ASI Air, and that's how the AVX connects to the ASI Air. Um, that was kind of a, a controversy for a while, kind of an issue, but finally got it worked out. Here, the Rokinon lens does come with a light shield, which will um, help uh, external light from messing up the the view and this actually acts as a little bit of a dew heater I do have a couple dew heaters but I haven't needed to use it yet and I will leave you with a couple pictures that I took the first night out which was on October 20th 2024 with this rig and it's the Andromeda Galaxy after 40 minutes the entire galaxy with a UV IR cut filter the moon was at three-quarter phase, and it was in Taurus, right next to the Andromeda Galaxy, and then my next object was the Pleiades. And that was a 24 and a half minute picture uh, with the same uh, IR, UV IR cut filter that uh, I took that image with, and you can see the nebulosity came out on the Pleiades, and that was very close to one of my best images, the best image I've gotten of the Pleiades, and that was at a dark site, a Borough 4 dark site out at Lee County, Illinois, 
only 24 minutes. Here I was able to replicate that in my backyard under Bortle 7 skies with a three-quarter moon. Apparently all you need is f2.8. So I should mention that the Rokinon lens has adjustments from f2 all the way up to f22. One of the hard settings is f2.8 and f4 and either one of those settings would work fine. But if you're ever looking at doing a lens setup here with your ASI Air camera, save yourself a lot of time if you have the $400 and just get the Rokinon 135 millimeter F2, depending on what kind of amount you want. Clear skies, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.